Hello, everyone. This is geometry lesson 8-2, trigonometric ratios. Um, in this lesson, we'll be able to use trigonometric ratios to find lengths and angle measures of right triangles. Some key vocabularies are cosine, sine, tangent, trigonometric ratios. Okay, I know some of you or many of you have not yet been introduced to trigonometry yet, and that's totally fine. This is a good introduction um, from geometry perspective. Let's look at critique and explain. A teacher asks students to write a proportion using the lengths of the legs of the two right triangles. Okay, we have two right triangles. The two students' responses are shown. Diego said JK over MN should be equal to JL over MO. So that's a proportion Diego wrote down. Rebecca wrote down JK over LK. So JK over LK is equal to MN over MO. Okay, so part A, do you think that the proportion that Diego wrote is correct? So let's check Diego's proportion. Can we write this or not? When can we write proportions like these? Where we have JK over MN, so their um, corresponding legs in the right triangle, right? Um, so we can write them if we have similar triangles. Are they similar? The triangle similar? Yeah, by AA similarity theorem, the triangles are similar. And so if you have similar triangles, you can write a proportion for the corresponding sides, right? So yeah, it, it makes sense. So part A, we're gonna say yes. Set up a proportion with corresponding parts of similar triangles with the lengths of one triangle and the numerators and the lengths of the other triangle and the denominators. So yeah, Diego, what Diego wrote should be correct. And part B, do you think that the proportion that Rebecca wrote is correct? JK over JL being equal to MN over MO. Yeah, they're also corresponding sides across, right? So JK over JL should be proportional to MN over MO because they're also uh, corresponding sides. So part B, I'm gonna write it here. So yes, her proportion can be gotten from the other using algebra. So it's basically, they're the same thing, okay? Um, so let's, uh, let's write down the algebra. So how could, how, how are they the same? If you have JK over MN, equal to JL over MO, how can we make the Diego's equation to Rebecca's? We can simply divide by JL on both sides so that that's one over MO is equal to JK over JL times MN, and then multiply by MN on both sides and say, Okay, then that's just going to be JK over JL, which is equal to MN over MO. Okay, so using algebra, you can say that these two proportions are equal to each other. They're equivalent, equivalent expressions. So the last one, part C, use structures. If A over B is equal to CD, how can you get an equivalent equation such that the left side of the equation is A over C? Just like we um, just like we've seen from Diego's to Re Rebecca's equation, we can use the same algebra. 
for that. So A over B is equal to C over D. We can change that to A over BC equals one over D by dividing both sides by C. Then you get A over C is equal to B over D by multiplying both sides by B. Okay, so keep that in mind and we'll, we'll think about how trigonometric ratios um, relate angle measures to side lengths of right triangles. Okay, so we'll look at relationships between the angles and the lengths of right triangles. All right, so the concept here, you need to know the trigonometric ratios. Okay, first of all, sine and cosine and tangent, they are called trigonometric ratios. The trigonometric ratios or functions relate the side lengths of a right triangle to its acute angles. So it's really important to learn what they are. Sine of angle A, so if you're looking at angle A, sine of angle A is the leg opposite of um, angle A, so BC, over the length of hypotenuse, so AB. So sine, what's sine of B then? Sine of B would be the length opposite of B, which is AC, over length of hypotenuse is the same. Hypotenuse is uh, always the same, AB, okay? And then what about sine C? Sine C would be the opposite side, which is already a hypotenuse, AB, over the length of hypotenuse, AB, which is going to be 1. So the sine of the right angle will always be 1. Okay? Cosine, the length of leg adjacent to the angle. So cosine A would be adjacent, the leg adjacent. So AC over the hypotenuse AB. And cosine B would be what? The leg uh, adjacent to B, adjacent to B would be BC over hypotenuse AB. What about cosine C? Cosine C, the leg adjacent would be both of them, either of them. So that's, um, that's really, you can't really you, you can't really say which one is the leg adjacent. Um, so you just know that the cosine of um, of um, C cosine of a right angle is just gonna be zero. Okay, cosine of any right degree angle is going to be zero. Sine of any 90 degrees would be one. Okay, it's going to be more work to explore uh, why. So right now, we're just going to remember that, um, but we, we can come back and explore that as well. Tangent would be the leg, the opposite, the leg opposite over the leg adjacent. Okay, so tangent of um, angle A would be the one opposite, so BC over AC um, adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. Okay, but what about tangent B? It's flipped, right? The leg opposite would be AC now, and the leg adjacent would be BC now. What about tangent of C, where it's 90 degrees? It's really the leg opposite versus adjacent. You don't really know which one, right? But that's that because you can't use either of them, it's just gonna be zero. Okay, so 
hypotenuse AB over zero, you cannot have zero in the denominator. So that's just gonna be undefined. Okay. Yeah. So let's look at example one. Keep the trig ratios in mind. Understand trig ratios using similarity. So we'll try to understand the ratios. Um, how are sines of two different angles with the same measure related? How are they related is what we're gonna look at. Let triangle ABC and DEF be right triangles with angle B um, being equal to angle E. So then by AA similarity theorem, uh, the triangles are similar, right? You have two angles that are the same. So you can use properties of similarity to determine the relationship between sine B and sine E. By the definition of sine, you know that sine B is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse, hypotenuse. And so AC over AB. And then sine E is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse, which is DF over DE. And because they're similar, you know they're proportional, right? So AC over AB should equal to AB over DE. And you can rewrite this equation so that, um, so that we can see the relationship of the sign, right? So AC, you can say AC over DF should be equal to AB over DE, right? We're gonna use opposite and hypotenuse because that's what sign is, sign uses. So we wanna know how they're, how they're related. So AC over DF is equal to AB over DE. And if you multiply both sides by DF over AB, you get AC over AB is equal to DF over DE. So you see that the proportions are equal. Sine B is equal to sine E. So if the angles are the same, the sine, whatever your length are, your length could be different. But if your angle is the same, sine of that angle has to be one answer. There has to be one answer, okay? So the proportions are gonna be the same. So sine, cosine, tangent are actually the proportions of the legs. And no matter what your legs, what your length of the legs are, they're gonna be proportional, okay? Um, that means the triangles are similar. So you can check, you can even check if the triangles are similar by using the trig ratios, right? If you don't know, this is, uh, if you don't know um, this is a right triangle, then you can check the angles that are the same um, with the sign and see, oh, is this gonna be similar? If you know, the information for the length of the, the, uh, the two legs, right? So we're gonna do that later. And that's why this is very useful, okay? So any two acute angles with the same measure have the same sign. And same for cosine and tangent. So try number one, show that any two acute angles with the same measure have the same cosine. Cosine, how can we prove um, that the cosine would be the same. So using the same process, you can say that cosine B, cosine B, it would be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's adjacent and that's adjacent for E, right? And so adjacent is BC over hypotenuse, um, hypotenuse AB. And then cosine E is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So FE over DE. Wait, let's write CB so that it's corresponding. And I'm going to write FE over, what did I say? DE. And then we're gonna, because the triangles are similar, you can say 
that CB over FE must be equal to AB over DE. And multiplying both sides by DE over um, DE, wait, is that correct? We're going to multiply both sides by AB over FB. Okay. So no, FE over AB. And then we can get rid of FE and ABs here and get CB over AB is equal to FE over DE, which means the cosines must be equal to each other. So cosine B is equal to cosine E, okay? Yeah. So you can also say that AC over AB is equal to is equal to DF over DE because the cosine of the cosine of A would be AC over AB and cosine of D would be DF over DE. So that's cosine cosine of A is equal to cosine of D. And that's cosine B and cosine E, they're equal to each other. And then cosine C is, should be equal to cosine F, okay? Because cosine C should be equal to cosine F because um, CB, over AC should equal to FE over DF. Okay, example two, red trigonometry ratios. You're gonna use the definitions of the trig ratios. Sign H would be opposite over hypotenuse, OH. So remember, so katoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? It's not so katao, it's so katoa, okay? And example two. In try number two, what are the sine cosine tangent ratios of angle F? So let's, example two, these were sine cosine tangent of angle H. So what about angle F? Sine F, cosine F, and tangent F. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so sine of F here should be opposite HG over hypotenuse HF. So that's gonna be nine over 15, which simplifies to three over five, okay? You don't have to simplify, but you can practice because we're gonna simplify later, okay? Cosine F is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is uh, GF, over hypotenuse HF, so that's 12 over 15, okay? Four over five. And then tangent would be opposite over adjacent. Opposite A of F is HG, over adjacent is GF, so nine over 12, so that's three over four, okay? So sine of F is three over five, Sine a uh, uh, cosine of f should be four over five, and tangent of f should be three over four. Okay, so one by one, you can figure them out. Remember the rules. So katoa. Okay, 
Um, next example, trigonometric ratios of special angles. What are the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios for 30, 40, and 60 angles? 30, 45, and 60 angles. So remember the special triangles? Yeah. What are the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios for them? Do we have special ratios? You, you already know they're going to have special ratios, the sides, right? Um, so using trigonometric ratios, how can we relate the trigonometric ratios to the special triangles? So sine 45, because the sides are equal and your hypotenuse is square root two of uh, your, your one leg, um, sine 45 degrees is gonna be one over square root two, which simplifies to square root two over two. And cosine 45 degrees would be one over square root two. And so it's gonna be the same. Tangent 45 is just gonna be one, okay? So 45 degrees are gonna have these special proportions. All right, what about 30 degrees? 30, 60, 90 triangle have a special ratio of the lengths with uh, the shortest leg being it being one, hypotenuse should be two, and then the longer leg should be square root three, right? So sine of 30 degrees would be one opposite over hypotenuse, one over two. Okay, sine of 30 is always one over two. Cosine 30, so if that's x, that should be two x, right? Sine of 30, if it's x and two x, would be x over two x, which makes it one over two as well. So when you simplify it, even though the lengths are different, it's still gonna be the same proportion, okay? So one over two. Cosine 30 is square root three over two, Tangent 30, because that's adjacent, right? Tangent 30 is going to be 1 over square root 3, which is going to be simplified to square root 3 over 3 when you multiply square root 3 over square root 3 in both on, with, on the, in the fraction, right? And sine 60 is going to be square root 3 over 2, cosine 60, 1 over 2, tangent 60, square root 3. So you can already see some relationships between the 30 degrees angle and the 60 degrees angle, right? They're kind of the reciprocals, right? And the sine and cosine are, are switched. Yeah, so they're very special. All right, so how are the sine and cosine of complementary angles related? What about complementary angles? Do you remember what complementary angles are? It's not supplementary. Supplementary angles are when the angles add up to 180 then what do you think complementary angles are? The angles add up to 90 degrees, okay? So complementary angles are gonna have 90 degrees of, of the sum. So if you have a right triangle, that's when you have the other two angles that are complementary because your triangle should have 180 degrees um, when all the angles are added up. So, if you have a right angle, that means the other two angles must be complementary. So by the triangle angle, so exactly, by the triangle angle sum theorem, the two acute angles in any right triangles are complementary. And you can say angle A plus B plus C is 180. Angle A plus B plus 90 is 180. So angle A and uh, angle B is going to be 90. So finding the sine and cosine of complementary angles A and B, Sine of A should be A over C. Sine of B should be B over C. Cosine A is B over C. And cosine B is A over C. So you're, you see that sine A and cosine B should be, should be equal to each other. Cosine A and cosine B should be equal to each other. And guys, Trigonometry, in order to have trigonometry, can you have any triangles? No, you, it only works in right triangles, okay? So you cannot use trigonometry when you don't have right triangles because if you don't have right triangles, what do you not have? 
You don't know what the hypotenuse is, okay? So trigonometric ratio to begin with must be a right triangle. So for any angle that is not a right angle, um, sine A, sine of one angle should be equal to cosine of the other, uh, of the complementary angle, okay? Is basically what we learned from this, okay? Sine of any angle is equal to the cosine of its complement and vice versa. So try number three. Uh, look at parts A and B. This triangle in FGH, what is the value of Y? Figure out the value of Y using trigonometric ratios. Part B, how can you write an equivalent expression for cosine 70 degrees using sine? An equivalent expression for sine 34 degrees using cosine. So see if you can figure out by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? Part A, what's the value of y? What strategy, what strategy will you use to solve these problems? So for part A, you can use the cosine ratio for a 30 degrees angle because the side adjacent to 30 is known and FH you don't really know, right? But yeah, so um, you can use cosine 30 should equal to nine over y and figure out that y is equal to nine over cosine 30. And then you can plug that in into the calculator and say, oh, that's approximately 10 or 10.39. What's another way to solve this problem? You know that this is a special right triangle. And so you can say, oh yeah, I know that F, if F, I know if this is F H, this is 2FH, and that's going to be 3 times FH. So if 3 square 3FH three is 9 and 2FH is Y, then I can say that FH is Y divided by 2, and so square root three times y divided by two is nine. And then you can use this to use this equation to solve. So this is the first one, the first equation, right? And then that's the second equation. I changed it to this one. And then I used this to substitute into the equation one. Okay. And then from equation one, I got this. And so solving for y, y is equal to nine divided by square root of three times two. So 18 divided by square root of three is gonna be about 10.39, okay? But it is more simple. If you're gonna use calculator anyway, you can, if you know the trigonometry ratios, you can simply say, oh, that's nine divided by cosine 30 and just plug it into the calculator. And that's gonna be less steps for you to calculate which means less mistakes for you, okay? So a lot of times trigonometric ratios will help you um, get rid of some steps, okay? In order to show you, I plugged it into the calculator, the same thing, 18 divided by square root of three is 10.39 dot, dot, dot. Um, nine, over cosine 30 is also 10.39 dot dot dot. So they're exactly the same answer. It's just different ways to solve them. You also know, yeah, yeah. So you also know the trig ratios now. So you have more than one way to solve this problem. All right, part B. How can you write an equivalent expression for cosine 70 using sine? Equivalent expression for sine 34 using cosine. So what's the strategy? You could use either sine or cosine because the desired side is adjacent to one known angle and opposite the other and the hypotenuse is known. Yeah. So in the calculator again, let's uh, type in cosine 70. So 70 and then cosine. Cosine 70 is 0 0.342. And then 
sine 34 is 0 0.55919 dot dot dot. Okay, you can you can use um, yeah. So 